at third. Ford driving in. Lance is good. Bill Ford on the drive down the middle. If you ask everybody in the audience, what do you remember about Phil Ford? I'll tell you what to remember. Four corners. North Carolina basketball is Phil Ford, Michael Jordan, Dean Smith. Some like myself who followed basketball all the way down the line, to this day, I would still put him as the best point guard to ever play in this league. First of all, you have to have a gift. I call it a blessing from God. And I was blessed with the gift. I was blessed to play for the greatest coach to ever coach basketball. And I had great fun at the University of North Carolina. So I was very satisfied with my college career. But Phil's journey to be one of the greatest Tar Heels to ever play the game started much earlier. Growing up in a small town called Rocky Mount, North Carolina. Rocky Mountain is a great place to grow up. Uh, I've got so many great memories growing there and I wouldn't want to grow up in any other place in the whole world than Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. Well, Rocky Mountain's a little, I call, sleepy Eastern North Carolina town. Uh, you know, a lot of pride, a lot of tradition. And for Phil, that tradition quickly became basketball. I love to play basketball so much. Uh, I would go in the house and get cookies <laughs> for the for my buddies in the neighborhood when they wanted to leave to go home and I'd bribe them with cookies to stay and play another game. I just uh, enjoyed playing basketball so much. It was just a lot of fun. It was that kind of love for the game that made him one of the best guards in the state by the time he reached high school. It was a recruiting battle back then. Uh, we felt pretty good about it. We kind of knew, uh, or at least I kind of felt, that mom and dad wanted Phil to play for Coach Smith. and. Uh, Phil was very close to his mom and dad, and I think that's what Phil wanted to do anyway. My mom was a French and English teacher, and she didn't follow basketball a lot. And the first time Coach Smith came to visit me, when uh, Coach Smith left, uh, my mom looked at my dad and said, wasn't it nice of North Carolina to send a dean down here to talk to Little Phil? And in the end, playing for one of the greatest coaches ever was just too much to pass up. I guess you can say I was North Carolina's to lose, and, and they did everything right in recruiting me. So the story was set. Phil Ford would become the first ever freshman to start for Dean Smith, and would nearly be unstoppable in the Four Corners offense. I don't know that there's another player who has his name locked with something that team did that usually indicated victory. You saw that, you could just hear the groans in opposing gymnasiums and arenas. You know, I dribble around a little bit, looking like I wasn't looking to score. He was a pre-video game with opposing players chasing him. And here he was, bobbing and weaving, a water bug, if he saw an opening to the basket, a speeding bullet, and once he hit the lane, spinning top. Bell fake the pass over to Houston, out to Ford. Ford driving in, layup is good! Bell Ford on the drive, down the middle! All of a sudden, you know, somebody relaxes, somebody can drive their man to the basket, or we could get a backdoor layup, or they would get frustrated and foul us. And before you know it, it had a snowball effect, and we'd be up eight or nine points, and at that time, it was, it was over. He would go on to have one of the most successful seasons ever for a Tar Heel, leading his team all the way to the ACC championship game, beating rival NC State. For us to beat our arch rival uh, for the ACC tournament after the way we had played early in the season was just uh, like a fairy tale. And with the defeat of you know, the giant at that time, NC State, and David Thompson, and Monty Tao, and being the first freshman to ever win the tournament MVP award. The winner, Phil Ford. Well, like, winning the MVP is a great honor, but it doesn't come close to the, the honor that the team won the Atlantic Coast Conference Championship. He would also lead the Tar Heels to another ACC title in 1977, and on to the national championship game against Marquette that very same year, only to fall short because of injuries. Walter Davis is playing with pins 
in his shooting hand. Tommy Lagarde is in a wheelchair. Phil's playing with the hyperextended elbow. I don't even know how North Carolina made it to the Final Four. I'm 56 years old, and I still have nightmares about that game. That's the only game in my career I still have nightmares about. I remember having a jump shot from the corner and from the baseline, and it rimmed out, and that would have put us up. You know, you can't put it on anything. You can't blame it on injuries. You just have to give Marquette credit. By the time he was a senior, his career had reached legendary status. He would leave Carolina as the all-time leading scorer, be named a three-time All-American, and the 1978 Player of the Year. And in his last game at Carmichael against Duke, the fans paid tribute with one last standing ovation, thanking him for all that he'd done. He always said that he wasn't going to cry when he got introduced before the game of the seniors were honored. It, it was all on his face. I mean, you could, you could read him as an athlete and as a competitor about as well as you could ever read anybody. It's just something that uh, I'll never forget. And with all those emotions, Phil almost played a perfect game by scoring 34 points and solidifying his jersey to be raised among the greats. As I say, I'm blessed to uh, have the type of fans that we have, and I can never thank them enough. And as I said, if I had to do it all over again, I wouldn't think twice about attending the University of North Carolina. 1978, think about this. It was the last year he played basketball at Chapel Hill. His legacy, in my opinion, is reflected in the way people respond to him today. He is, in a lot of ways, as a player, he's what Dean Smith was to Carolina. He's Carolina basketball.